Welcome to another edition of Western Bass TV. I'm Mike Tuck. Today I'm here at Clear Lake with Tony Stoltz. Um, we're driving all over the lake today, going to try a different selection of, of baits. Um, yeah, summertime at Clear Lake for the last three years is just absolutely unbelievable. There's no better place to be. Um, you can take spring, fall, I mean, it doesn't matter. Clear Lake this time of year is just... Uh, I mean, really, it's a godsend for tournament fishermen because we can take our weakest strength and come out here, which for me is probably cranking, and I can come out and throw a crankbait all day and catch 50 of them and work on it. Um, that goes for any technique, drop shotting, dart heading, whatever your weakness is, be it a spinner bait or whatever, you can come out here and expect to catch fish on it all day long. Um, fishing whatever type of cover you want, you know, docks or breaks, uh, rock piles, tules, tule points, grass lines, just, you know, all your standard types of cover and structure and uh, just really get a lot of confidence in your weaker points because there's always going to be a time we can use that. Um, right now we're on the south end behind Rattlesnake. Just throwing a crankbait down to some scattered rocks on this bank that I'm trying to hit. There's a lot of bait down here. Fish seem to be relating to it. So I'm just kind of crawling this crankbait through it and we're going to see how that goes this morning. I'm going to go try and get some topwater fish in a minute. Um, in the morning, this time of year, follow the shade lines. Um, probably till about 10 o'clock, you're going to have good shade lines throughout different parts of the lake. Try and follow those right here. We've got a good example of it. It's about 7.30, and you can see it's probably 20 feet off the bank still. And this bite will actually get really good right as that shade line pulls up against the bank. It really pushes the bait up tight and the fish just get positioned really well. Um, so the closer that shade line is to the bank, the better the bite should be. And then how the sun gets out, and then it's just kind of go wherever you go, fish deeper structure, any isolated shade pockets from a, a, a weird shaped dock or a tree that's out of the way, uh, anything that can give you, cast a little bit of a shade line, uh, fish will get in that. And then in the afternoon again, you'll get them on the other side of the lake. You know, right now we're fishing the, what would be the north facing side, I guess. And then, uh, or west facing bank. In the afternoon, maybe we'll get on the east facing bank and get shade lines that side. So I got nothing on the crankbaits. Slow down, throw a jig for a second. Uh, jigs, probably my favorite bait to throw this time of year up here. Throw it all day, docks, breaks, anything really. Flip it. Um, skips well, and uh, I, just, I seem to catch a lot of big fish on it. And, and this time of year, you're going to catch fish. It's not going to be the problem. So what I try and do is baits like this, half, half five eighths ounce. Um, that way I'm always feeling the bottom, and it's one of those deals where you go out and a bait like this. What ends up happening, you find great spots for the spring. Um, even if you know you may not catch fish there today or throughout the summer, you probably will. But you're gonna find a, a good bottom transition, uh, a bank that got rock running out to 15 feet you didn't know was there or maybe you just always came and threw a spook over the top of a point or something and if you're throwing a jig you're going to find out oh, there's big rock down there chunk rock or or maybe there's a piece of wood uh, it's good for just really deciphering what's what's down there so that's probably my main reason i guess for why i like to throw a jig 
Um, generally, first thing in the morning, if you can get out, the first hour, there's usually a bite that's pretty unreal. Um, you get in the primrose, which is the leafy grass we have here. It'll be matted up on the bank. And just fishing with a, I like to fish with a frog. But the first hour, once the sun hits it, that bite kind of goes away and you got to find other stuff. But the first hour, all summer long, you're going to go out and you can probably catch anywhere from seven to as many as possibly 20 frogfish in the first hour. And a lot of times it's a real nice fish. Um, there's a lot of bites that are, are really good, but the frog bite's probably the most exciting one. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get out quite that early this morning to try it, but but keep in mind when you come out in the summertime, just pick a protected pocket. Um, any of the coves, any in the lake, doesn't there seem to fish don't seem to care where, but anywhere they can push bait overnight. Um, there's a pocket coming up on our right hand side here that if it had primrose in it would be a good example. Um, these fish feed around the clock, you know, day, night, doesn't matter to them. But at night, they really get the bait balled up good and pushed into places they can ambush them. Um, so the little pockets like that where there's primrose that the bait will get under and feel secure are the types of areas that that bite really works best in. The fish will push them, they'll feed on them all night. And as the sun comes up, or is starting to come up, daybreak, the fit, the bait will really concentrate in the, those overhead cover areas and the fish position just outside of them and they know I mean they're every day they know the sun's getting ready to come up the baits gonna be scattered and they absolutely go on a binge for that first hour in the morning shallow first two feet of the bank and just crush everything in sight it's, it's really one of the most amazing bites you can imagine so, so try that next time you're out in the bays. Don't want a topwater frog. Color doesn't seem to matter. Um, they're just they're, they've got the bait pushed in there, and they they know it's time to eat it. So the first hour every morning, those protected bays are where that bite's going to be the best. Oh, it's a toad! Oh. All right, first fish of the day. He's taking me for a ride. I don't know how good he's hooked. I'm going to see just how well this Lamb of Glass cranking stick works. It's a good solid five, six pound fish. Drags plenty loose. This fish wear out. Oops, yeah. uh, maybe he's not that big. Four and a half. on the board. <laughs> well, he's solid four and a half anyway. 460, 470 fish. Let's see what else we can do. When I first first came up I thought it was seven. <laughs> That happens when you don't catch any all morning. No, don't stick your fucking thumb in there. There's an average, maybe a slightly below average fish for this time of year. I saw that fish boil in the tuilies, pushing some bait, and uh, it took me about three or four casts to actually get them to come back and eat it but see if there's any more that's two he's barely hooked Let's see if I can get another hook in him real quick there we go I got two in him now I think one just pulled out 
Oh, I got him. He's still alive. I'm going to settle down just a little bit. There we go. That's not the one we're looking for, but the way the day's going, we'll take a bunch of these. Definitely have pliers when you're crankbait or spook or Rico fishing. Otherwise, we'll be giving you a demonstration on how to pull a hook out of your finger. See what else we can do. Little but alive. Uh oh. He's tongue hooked. Try and save him before he gets too uh, horror movie ish. guys I don't know what happened to all the big fish dude suckers thinning me oh well Frogfish. Itty bitty sucker, but he is pegged. He wasn't going nowhere. Right through the brain. Sorry, little dude. He'll be easy to catch later. <laughs> Alright, guys, so here's the deal. Today it's been kind of slow. What I thought would be happening really wasn't. Uh, we fished a lot of structure throughout the morning. Doing jigs and, and DD-22, deep diving crankbaits, um, a little drop shotting, uh, rock piles breaks, docks that were near breaks, um, so a couple of grass lines, and it just really wasn't happening. We struggled throughout most of the morning. I think we've only caught five or six fish. Uh, we made a move all the way to the north end. Going to try fishing some creeks. Totally different than what we've done so far, and basically... What I'm going to try and do, what I'd like to have happen is just to get these fish that have positioned under the little shade pockets. It's 11 o'clock, 11.15, um, the sun's directly overhead, and the fish are really going to be stuck in these little small pockets. This time of day where the shade pockets are going to be at their smallest. There's, there's just, until the sun gets at an angle to get behind whatever a cover there is, overhead cover on the bank, whether it be a rock wall like at Henderson or or the trees like we are in here, um, when it's directly overhead, the shade pockets are going to be small and it's going to be really easy to target the fish. So we'll get to see, give it a whirl, see how that works out in here. That's a little better fish. A little better example of what Clear Lake is all about in the summer. Chunky, healthy, healthy fish. Tweety. Of, of isolated cover that fish will use that you can target. One little isolated grass pad um, that provides a real good overhead canopy. The water's pretty clear, so they're naturally going to be on all these little isolated deals. And kind of got a couple more coming up. Maybe we can put a little something together, but that's a perfect example of, of, uh, of an isolated piece of overhead cover that I like to target this time of year.
He was little, but that was exciting. I bet you thought he was a five pounder. Coming down the side of the wall. Doesn't feel like a huge fish. Ooh, he don't have it very well. Yeah, he's got to get it to his mouth. This was almost going to be a hook taken out seminar. So anyway, still chunky. Fish are a lot warmer than, than what the air temperature is. So uh, tell me. You know, the bite should get a little better as the day goes on and start to catch up with their body heat. You know, as fish start to get in that fall deal, they, uh, they'll they get on these walls. Mm, there was another one. Pretty good, especially in the mornings. And, uh, and when the shade lines start to form right on the edge, but the, uh, they'll push the bait right up against them, and whenever they're ready to go eat some, it's pretty easy meal. Just really got to target the edges and get as close as you can to it. And uh, anytime you can make it deflect off something obviously I'll help you trigger a bite as well. I don't know how big this one is either. He doesn't feel big at all. He's not. He's barely hooked. He barely hooked. Oh goodness. All right, little dude. Right in the top of the head. That is certainly not what we're looking for. Uh, this time of year, you know, crankbaits are a really key deal. Uh, this one here is a quarter ounce speed trap, Lure Jensen. A um, couple things uh, you want to do, you want to make sure it's tuned properly and on the eye of the bait you, you adjust that by putting your pliers on it, tweaking it a little bit to the right to make it run to the right and just a little bit to the left to make it run to the left and just ever so slight, a little bit too much to the one, one way, one direction or the other, uh, the bait will start to roll. So uh, that's one thing we're going to do. I'm going to be fishing on these bridge pilings. Uh, I'm going to want to tweak it just a little bit. I want this bait to actually run right into the bridge piling to deflect off of it. Um, another key thing this time of year, keep lots and lots and lots of spare hooks. Um, in a fall tournament where I'm cranking pretty much all day, I might change my hooks 20 times in a day, especially if I'm throwing a rattle trap. So. I keep a box like this and I've got all different sizes. I've got them, I know I put on a marker what size they are, um, except for this one. And uh, what I like to do with this particular one, uh, same as my rattle traps, I like two number four Gamagatsu round bins, one on the front, one on the back. Um, it only takes you a second, you'll get pretty good at it. Just uh, don't bite your thumbnails off this time of year because they're uh, pretty, pretty key for just sliding it in there, pulling the hooks off throw those in the trash somewhere get rid of them at the end of the day or if you're in a 
deep spot in the lake, I guess you toss them in there as well. Just uh, pop them off. I like to go to the front first. Uh, a lot of guys now are using the, the red hook. Um, I do it a little bit. I don't know how much it makes a difference or not. But if you are going to do that, you always want to put the red hook on the front. Um, basically, the logic behind it, um, right before a fish strikes your bait, he sees the red hook and that creates a target where he'll center on where he's going to strike the bait and it'll increase your, your hookup percentage. Um, so always make sure your hooks are sharp. Uh, if you have a file and you're good at filing, sharpening your hooks, it's a good way to go about it as well. Um, personally, it only takes me a few seconds to change the hooks, especially when I'm really into the end of the tournament and and uh, just flying as fast as I can you know slowing down with the file takes me a little more time treble hooks if it was a single hook uh, yeah probably but with the trebles for me it's just a, it's a little not quite as cost efficient but it uh, it's a lot faster for me just to get them get them off get them on and back to catching fish so ball crankbaits change your hooks like a giant but feels like a good one He's a nice fish. Almost done. That's a lot nicer fish than what we've been doing today. Good three and a quarter or so. But uh, anyway, came out of the shade, up underneath the dock. Um, it's been really slow today. It really just slowed down now, started throwing a drop shot around the docks. Um, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fish activity. We're gonna finish this dock out, probably make a move to the other side of the lake, uh, see if anything's better over there. Um, all these little docks I've hit have seemed like the little shade pockets underneath them I can get. Uh, about every fourth or fifth dock I can get a fish on a crankbait, but I've switched colors three or four times and I can't get them to, to really commit to it or smack it at the bait. I can't keep them hooked up. Um, so we're having a little trouble up here on this end, but that's the start. We're going to run the end here in a minute uh, after this and uh, see if we can't put something else together. Oh, God. I love light line fishing. <laughs> I think he wanted it a little. About that much. That's when you get the right color right there. Buddy, go up.
Well, again, we really could have caught these fish at Orville, <laughs> but uh, drop shot, another typical drop shot weenie fish. They do catch plenty of large ones though. Uh, somewhere in the dark this morning getting ready, I guess I uh, didn't pay attention, put on my pink underwear, and, and that's what we ended up with today. So. Um, it was a real tough bite. Uh, I really thought we were going to catch some topwater fish this morning. Um, frogfish, I got a few frogfish, nothing like I expected. Um, the baits we were using, just talking about the frog, it's a snag proof frog, black and yellow head, um, Tweety, and uh, you don't need to really modify it. Best way to modify these, go buy one at Bob's, take it out of the package, tie it on, and throw it. Um, that's really about it. And uh, unless you really want to get carried away with it, you know, you'll, you'll end up doing more harm than good. Um, they walk fine right out of the package. Um, if anything, you might change your hooks um, to a EWG. Uh, let's see throwing crankbaits around, had several on the end of the docks. Um, several fish come off the end of the docks, which is a typical uh, summer and a fall transition pattern. This is a Lucky Craft BDS-4, and uh, had several fish on that. Um, they weren't really holding on to it very good today. I changed colors several different times, uh, depths, for the ones that I wanted. I went with a three, a two, uh, up my line size a little bit, and I just couldn't get them to hold on to it. Uh, we went with a, a deeper diving crankbait to catch several and a couple nice ones, which was some DD-22s and a different color than this. This is just a Bill Norman DD-22 suspend. I was throwing a chartreuse blue back. Uh, it's another good color this time of year. Try to rattle trap. Um, but really, what it came down to was uh, throwing a drop shot. It was really tough. Uh, we ended up with uh, about a 100, 100 plus boat tournament going on today. And uh, it's just a real tough deal right now. What we got, it's the, the second week of September and the overnight lows and the daytime highs are about 50 degrees apart. So the fish kind of get, get in a little bit of a shock right now. Um, they're starting to adjust. And uh, what it is, it's the start of the fall transition. So the fish, really the key thing is they start getting on bait, um, but with the water still off colored, it just makes them harder to target. So uh, we ended up just jumping around the lake, doing a lot of different stuff. And in the end, tough bite. Um, couldn't get a lot going, so we went with the drop shot. That's what we ended up catching most of our fish on. So, uh, till next time, uh, I'm Mike Tuck, and you're watching Western Bass TV. I'm Jimmy Reese, and you're watching Western Bass TV. I'm Mike Tuck, and you're watching West watching Western Bass. TV.